Hi guys, this is Tarun here and in this video we will be discussing about chartering. What are the types of charter, what are the important points that one must know from Oru's perspective. So without any further ado, let's start. First let's have a look at what is carriage of goods by sea. So we can carry the goods by sea in three main ways, the direct mode, the subsidiary mode and the indirect mode. The direct mode is where we use the Hague, Hague-Wisby, Hamburg rules. So these rules are directly implied and there are three parties, the shipper, the transporter and the receiver. So as per these rules, we follow and uh, the goods are transported. In the subsidiary mode, we have uh, waybills, parcel tickets and special agreements. So these are special tools which you not need not have to know everything but these are one way of doing it and the third one the indirect mode is what we are more concerned about this is where the bare boat time and the voyage charter comes into play so when the surveyor asks you what are the types of chartering i would rather suggest that you stick to the main three types that is the voyage time and the bare boat also known as the demise there are other types that you must know have a little knowledge about it like consecutive chartering, slot chartering, joint venture, parceling, contract of freightment. You must know or you must have a little bit of idea, but don't give him too much ammunition, wear any probes and then you get caught. Moving on, I would like to give a small gist of three types of main charters, that is a voyage time and demise. So we'll mostly talk about four things, the fuel, crew cost, port dues and uh, costs, and the ship management. In a voyage charter, all these four items which I just mentioned are being taken care of by the ship owner. In a time charter, the fuel cost, port dues are taken care of by the charter, whereas the crew cost and the ship management is taken care of by the ship owner. In a demise or a bare boat charter, everything is being taken care of by the charter. Moving on, there are some terms that you must know like uh, lay days, cancelling day, lay can, lay time, demerge, dispatch, freight treat that is whether you are paying dollar per ton or lump sum and one must remember that these are only applicable to void chartering. Also you should know about on hire, off hire survey with, this, with respect to the time charter. Have an idea of what are the types of charter party available in the market like BIMCO has its own standard forms, we will discuss about it a little further. Bill of lading, you should know what is a clean or a dirty bill of lading. I will be touching upon those topics also. So what do you mean by lay day? Lay day refers to a period of specified days, for example January 8th to 15th, during which owners must uh, present the vessel for loading. And what happens if they don't present? That's right. The charter has the right to refuse taking the vessel. So as I mentioned earlier, lay days are a period of days. And in the given example, we give it a count like from 8th to 15th, you may be having say 8 days in this case. So January 8th is the first lay day and January 15th is the last lay day also known as the cancelling date. Now moving on, this lay days when mentioned via email, when the charter sends the ship for email, they also use a term called as lay can. Lay can is nothing but lay days and the cancelling date. So in other words, lay can is the period during which the ship must be present at the load port and tender is NOR that is a notice of readiness and also it should state that it is in ready state for loading or discharging. Now here I have mentioned if it doesn't come within the lay days the charterer has the right to refuse it but also there could be a case where the ship comes before the lay days. Similar to the previous case here also the charterer is not by law forced to take the ship immediately. So until the lay day start, he can keep the ship on hold. 
Next, we also must have heard about a term called late time. Well, late time is the term used for time given to the charter for loading and unloading the cargo. And one of the important points to remember is the late time does not count the period of late time for calculating the freight. That means the late time is excluded for freight. Also, the terms we just discussed, the late can, late days, late time is only used for Y chartering. That's quite obvious. If we dig a, dip a bit further, we'll find there are many types of late time also. There's definite late time, calculative late time, indefinite late time. We need not go deep into it, but you should know how and when these are used. Next, we should be aware of demerge. What is a demerge? Demerge is the amount or fixed amount paid by the charterer to the ship owner if he exceeds the late time. Similarly, if the charterer is able to complete his cargo operations quicker than the expected time, then there's an amount paid by the ship owner to the charterer, which is called as dispatch, which is again mentioned in the charter party. Moving on, in uh, time chartering, one has to carry out on hire survey. So on hire survey is a third party survey where they will check the bunkers remaining on board, the general condition of the vessel, what is the condition of the tanks or holes, whether they are fit to carry the cargo. And uh, if there is an existing damage to the holes, those are noted down. So these surveys are jointly carried out by approved surveys and bar are paid 50-50 by the owner and the charterer and uh, likewise the time spent on the survey is normally taken by the owner's risk. So after he finishes his survey he delivers a delivery certificate. So this is the proof that the ship has been inspected. Likewise this is also called as an uh, off hire survey and re-delivery certificate. Similar to the previous on hire survey, here also there's a surveyor who comes and he'll see what is the bunker left and whether there is uh, fair wear and tear accepted, any additional damages to the ship which has occurred, all these things have been taken into account. Also, if the repairs are too extensive, those have to be negotiated and then they will come out to terms of who's going to pay for those repairs. And as I mentioned earlier, when the bunkers are again calculated, they are again bought back by the ship owner. And after the final settlement is done, a re-delivery certificate has been issued by the surveyor. Moving on, the next term you must know is a charter party. Charter party is an agreement between the ship owner and the charterer for the use of a ship or the cargo spaces for an agreed amount of money, also known as uh, freight or freight hire. Moving on, we have an agreement called as a bill of lading, which is nothing but a declaration by the master that he's received the cargo on board his ship and he assures that he will carry it, will take care of it and deliver the cargo to the addressed person. So bill of lading serves three purposes. It is a uh, document which says that the ship has received the cargo and uh, it's an evidence of contract of carriage and finally it's a document of title so whosoever holds the bill of lading he is the owner of the cargo so specifically with respect to orals you get quite often asked about clean bill of lading and dirty bill of lading so as the name suggests clean bill of lading so if you're if you're the master of the vessel and you receive the cargo and the cargo is well packed, it's maintained in great condition. That time, the bill of lading is given to the uh, supplier or the person who's transporting is good and no remarks is put. In such condition, this kind of a bill of lading is called a clean bill of lading. Whereas a dirty bill of lading is issued when uh, while receiving, you notice there are some damages to the cargo or the packing is not been done properly. And that is when, uh, remark has been added there's some damages 
so when such a remark is appearing on the bill of lading it's called a dirty bill of lading and the main important importance that uh, if you have a clean bill of lading the bank would be very happy to give you a loan against that bill of lading because the cargo has already been on ship whereas they don't give you loans or they don't give you overdraft or drafts if you have a dirty bill of lading so if you are in a person in position of a bill of lading so you should ensure that it is a clean bill of lading which gives you more advantage that is you can take loans with uh, holding that bill of lading i think we have extended this session a lot finally i just like to say that uh, there are various sample charter party forms given so i suggest you visit the bimco website so you'll find uh, many forms charter party forms namely bear con bear camp time bim camp voyage the main idea i'm telling you this is quite often you get asks uh, okay please tell me when does the chartering start or when does the charter party starts so here in these forms they have specifically mentioned when does the charter period chartering starts and when does it end the terms of the ladies the freight rate all these details are given so you have a quick view on this and uh, i'm sure you'll be able to answer the questions being asked well that's about it i hope this video serves this purpose and uh, my aim of sharing whatever i have collected gets to you see you soon guys